This is the Ufala Press Report for the 1st of July, 2013. Ufala Fire Department Bi-Weekly Report. This is from June 27th to July 1st. Uh, we had a grand total of 18 incidents with seven different types. Once again, the majority of those being uh, emergency uh, medical calls. We did have one passenger vehicle fire, car fire, that was reporting uh, that we issued on that. Uh, they had, When they got on scene, they found a gas leak under the engine compartment. Now, the fire was out on the right when they got there. The uh, homeowners had put it out with a garden hose and a fire extinguisher. Uh, also, they had a gas leak or natural gas leak at, let me pull that report real quick. Uh, I think it was 100 Meadows Drive. Yeah. At uh, 431 South, there you know there's a natural gas valve there, and it's not uncommon for you to smell gas there. Uh, they did shut down 431 for a few minutes and had the uh, Circle K uh, business evacuated until the gas company got on scene. They advised that it was actually not that big a deal, so everything was opened back up, and they said they would be out there to fix it Monday morning. So, you know, we smell gas, we think, and it's a good idea. Just take, take it for what it's worth. If you smell gas, don't hang around, especially inside. Uh, we had a couple public service calls uh, and false alarm, false call. And we had one vehicle accident with injuries. They were minor in type as far as what I understand. And that's the extent of it. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, I was listening to the scanner the other day, and something happened and I'm just going to quote in general. It was somebody coming into town that had had gallbladder surgery and they were driving themselves in mm -hmm. and then calling for somebody to meet them or something was from on the south side. We have that happen on a fairly regular occasion where someone will call saying that they are on their way in. Generally, if it's you that's hurting, you know, and that's a mm -hmm. last ditch effort, we prefer you dial 911 if you can wait, you know, we'll get an ambulance to you. But some people will start coming in, and what we will do is we will meet them, but we just, you understand you're taking a risk on that, especially with other people. And if that person that's driving passes out, then of course you have other issues that goes along with that. Mr. Byron the Pirate sells all of his gold to Mr. Pond. Mr. Pond on Dale Road buys gold used in scrap gold. Mr. Pond at Ufala Flea Market on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. This is the Ufala Press Report for the 1st of July, 2013. Get somebody to drive you, if you can. Now, we, ha we have that happen on a lot of times where someone will call and say they are on the way, they want an ambulance to meet them. And we're more than willing to we'll do just that, you know. But please understand, drive safely. A lot of times what we do when we take our transfers out of town, from, say from hospital to wherever, uh, to another outside facility, family members want to follow. One of the first things we'll do is we'll say, look, you know, we are an emergency vehicle. If it is a true emergency, we will run emergency. But what you need to do is obey all traffic laws. Stop at red lights, intersections. Your hazard lights do not give you any benefit or any leeway. Or following me. Right, and the other thing is too, I, I have actually in the past, you gotta remember, I've been doing this over 25 years. I have in the past stopped an ambulance on the side of the road, got out of that ambulance, and walked up to the family member and told them to back off. I have called police officers in the past and had them stop people who were behind us and following us and hold them up. It's a dangerous situation. You don't need to do it. Our drivers are trained to operate in emergency vehicles. And even then, we don't run red lights. We don't run stop signs. Lights and sirens doesn't give you legal permission to break the law. We're asking for clearance is what we're doing. I think it's very important that people make a thought-out determination 
of at least a few seconds as to how they're going to transport. Yeah. Well, what's an emergency? We had this discussion before, you know. Mm -hmm. what's, what's an emergency? Well, what is, an emergency to us may not be the same thing as an emergency to you or some other people. But you got to understand, stress has a tendency to exacerbate any situation. If you're in a stressful situation and you're wanting to drive yourself into the hospital, by all means, if you feel that's what you need to do, do that. But understand, don't put yourself and other people at risk by doing that. On the, uh, going back to the report of the gas leak, when a person that resides in you follow smells gas, who should they call and how quick and... First, I'd say get away. I well, uh, definitely. Uh, they call 911, call the fire department. You know, we will come check it out. And if it's nothing that needs to go any further than that, you know, that's all we'll do. Um, a lot of these little gas valves that you see sitting around, sometimes they've got little pop-offs on them. And sometimes you, you will smell. And what you're smelling, you're not smelling gas because natural gas is odorless. You're smelling the mercaptan that they put in there. Mm -hmm to let you know that there is has been a little exposure of some sort if you will uh but yeah but unless you've got the uh, southeast alabama gas or the number to call them you know call 911 and we can always come out and take it take a look at it okay it was the craziest thing just driving along and this squirrel came out of nowhere wow the good news is alpha has the largest customer service team in alabama so you'll be dealing with people here, not all over the country. Awesome. Really not a scratch on it. You are lucky. For a plan built just for you, contact Keith Bryan in Eufaula. This is the Eufaula Press Report for the 1st of July, 2013. Good morning, Larry Hubbard, Eufaula Police Department. I'll be doing the crime report for the period of June 27th through July 1st, 2013. Kind of a quiet weekend. We had three arrests. Uh, we did investigate eight accidents, but only had three arrests. And not very many eye reports, offense reports. Um, of traffic we'll have to handle all next Monday, so that should be exciting. On our offense reports, we had a theft of property at State Docks. That was a uh, shoplifting, some five-hour energy drink. We have theft. Um, <clears throat> not sure where. Uh, Jackson Street. Two bicycles were taken. And assault and assault on North Fall Avenue. What it was, was uh, assault with two different victims, uh, North Carolina Avenue. In conjunction with that is a harassment and burglary first. Uh, same location. Where three men uh, pushed their way into a guy's residence and uh, beat him and his son up. Um, were the offenders known about the victims? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so this wasn't a random home invasion. No, 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 nothing like that. Did it require any hospitalization? Of the no, no, no. They're just pushing and shoving, and a few licks passed, closed fist, but no medical treatment or anything. We had a theft of property on North Randolph. Again, two bicycles were taken. Domestic violence, third degree, and criminal mischief, third degree, between a boyfriend and girlfriend. And on our arrest, we have Terrence Lewis, arrested, disorderly conduct, and minimum age to consume alcohol. And we have Dontavious Johnson arrested for disorderly conduct. Mr. Byron the Pirate sells all of his gold to Mr. Pond, Mr. Pond on Dale Road buys gold used in scrap gold mr pond 
at Ufala Flea Market on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Mr. Pond buys gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. Sell your gold on Dale Road. This is the Ufala Press Report for the 1st of July, 2013. That's it. Let me ask you a question that has nothing to do with the immediate reports, but talking about disorderly conduct, what mm -hmm. constitutes that? Being disorderly in public. Okay. <laughs> um, anything that, that annoys the public, uh, if you get out there screaming obscenities, um, if you annoy, harass the general public. I mean, you can't, I don't believe you can be necessarily disorderly in your own home if you're by yourself. If you get out on the public streets swearing, uh, making vulgar gestures, anything that annoys or harasses the general public, or they uh, um, are offended, so to speak, mm -hmm. constitute disorderly conduct. I don't know the textbook definition that... Uh, you have to bother the general public. Um, that's the best way I can put it. Looking at something else, we have four bicycles. What can people do to protect those bicycles from being stolen and then, if they are stolen, identifying? Well, um, preventing the theft is, of course, you could keep them in your house or in a locked building or lock them to something that can't be removed um, and have some kind of engraving on them. Most of them don't have like serial numbers, but you can put your own serial number on it. Uh, they have little engravers that don't cost much at all. Uh, anything that we can identify, because I mean, they make you know a million Huffy bicycles. Well, how can I distinguish this one from these other Four million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand. Uh, any kind of markings you put on it that that would be visible to us, we know what to look for. Um, the main thing is securing them. None of these that were stolen were secured. Uh, even in your own house and in your yard, I mean, you can you can say, "Well, it's my yard and it's my house. I'm not going to lock it." You don't have to. But don't be surprised when someone steals it. Uh, even at the police department, we lock our cars. We're not immune from theft, uh, crimes of opportunity. So just you know, be be vigilant with your property. If you want to keep it, make it difficult for somebody to get. And nine out of ten times, they won't get it. Most of our theft we deal with are crimes of opportunity. Uh, walk by a car, it's unlocked with a personal seat. It's gonna get gone. Uh, bicycles left unattended, you know, things of value, just laying around, easy pickings. So, just secure the best you can. What else on the bicycle would you recommend putting the, the identifying marks? Uh, In plain sight? No, I would put it up mm -hmm. under the frame. Okay. You could turn the bicycle upside down and engrave it. Um, it's anywhere inconspicuous that we could see uh, if we looked for it. Nothing hidden where we'd have to take the seat off to see it. Right. Um, but somewhere up under a fender, up under the frame, somewhere preferably more than one location. But it was the craziest thing. I was just driving along and this squirrel came out of nowhere. Wow. The good news is Alpha has the largest customer service team in Alabama. So you'll be dealing with people here, not all over the country. Awesome. Really not a scratch on it. You are lucky. For a plan built just for you, contact Keith Bryan in Eufaula. 305-926-1700.